So friends, uh, today we will discuss about a very important aspect of natural resource management and that is about common property rights. In brief, we call them as CPR. Many a times uh, you might have heard about uh, common property rights in various aspects. Today, I will try my best to explain you that how it is important in case of natural resource management. First of all, let us find out what is CPR, what is common property right, what do you understand by this terminology. Property right is a social relationship between a resource user and other potential users. So, with respect to a particular object, place or feature of the land means that in one community, in one particular location, it is the relationship between suppose a resource like water, a pond. Now, a pond is a resource for a village. Now, that pond if it is not owned by any particular individual then it is a common property of that particular village. Now, if I as a villager use that the water of that pond on a regular basis and tomorrow another villagers, my neighbor, he or she also comes and start taking water from the pond, same pond or utilize the water of that pond for various purposes, then we get into certain issues. How to share a resource which is common to many and there comes the issue of common property rights, the relation between one individual users with the other in users. Now, common property does not describe the resource itself, but what it does, it rather actually explains or the relationships that a society establishes towards the resource, very important to understand. I repeat it once again. Common property, say here that pond, example of pond I have given. Common property when I say or when we say it does not describe that pond itself, but rather it describes the relationship that me and my neighbors actually having with that pond. Is it clear? Because that is the point of interest for everyone is the utilization of the water from that pond. So, we do not give much importance on the particular pond itself, or rather how the people are actually having relationship with that pond or pond's water. That is all is about common property, right? Common property resources like the pond that I have given an example are for the common use of any community in the entire village. As I said, unless that pond belongs to me, my pond, uh, in my own land I have you know created this pond, then it belongs to me. If that pond is a natural pond, it belongs to everyone in the village. Now, these kind of resources which are common to all are free and it is having open access to a set of users. When I say set of users, probably that particular village. Certainly, if some people come from another village, there will be some other kind of dynamics and issue, right? So, kind of a area or jurisdiction based kind of ownership. Now, these kind of resources are owned, exploited or managed by any identifiable community. Like suppose in a village, as I said, that from other village if somebody comes, they may not easily use that pond water because it is within the jurisdiction of that village. So, the village panchayat will have a say on that common property here, we are talking about the pond and pond's water. So, that particular village where I stay, I stay along with my neighbors, we will have a kind of a ownership to that pond which does not belong to me or any other you know neighbor directly, but it belongs to our village. So, me and my neighbors are actually 
using that pond water and ideally it should be managed by our village and community. But me or any individuals living in that village will not have any direct right regarding that pond. So, it is a common property for that village. Here comes the scale issue, here I am talking time and again the village because within that jurisdiction. Next, when we say common property in the paradigm of natural resources, it could be resources like river, rivulets, irrigation channel, drainage channel, canals, ponds, tanks, etc., etc. It could be also a wasteland, a pasture land for cattle grazing, a forest, a woodland, unclassified government forest. So, this could be also uh, a common property of that village where I stay along with my neighbors. Okay? Common property right, although as I said that area specific within the you know, forest or within that village, that particular community is allowed to use because as I say that there is a jurisdiction also involved even though it is common, but it may not be common for all villages in the district. Every village will have its boundary, virtual boundary and also a village panchayat who will actually have a kind of administrative setup for proper utilization of that common property. In case of forest land, the products of suppose reserve forest, they are not accessible to the community. So, in my village, within my village, if I have a protected forest by my state government, then that particular forest, even though it is within my village, I will not have access because that is protected. Government has its ownership on that. And making use of special permission to access this kind of forest, to have forest products, that does not come under the common property right. You do not have straight common properties right CPR to such kind of resources which are under the protection of government. But in case of protected forest, collection of wood, leaves, grazing of cattle, most of the times are being allowed for the common people, for the people who are community residing at that village. But it is not fully accessible by all the communities. So, there is certain kind of administrative policies exist for those resources which in within my village, but under the ownership of government. All right. So, it is not a straight away kind of access like the pond case that I have told. And also it is uh, often found that it could be very costly to exclude individual from using the resources through physical barriers or any legal actions. Because the forest that which is under the government protection and if you being a community on that particular village, you say to the government that I want to use it because I need it for my survival. At times it could be a costly affair. You may have to go for legal actions or maybe you can you know go and collect wood and leaves without the knowledge of government. But that can go into some kind of legal actions could become an issue of law and order. So, the benefits consumed by any individual for using resources such as this kind of forest you know from the benefits which are available to others can bring you into some kind of problem. So, it is important to know that how much right and how much accessibility you have to those resources which is within your area, but not common to all. Probably it is protected and protected for certain regions by the government. So, property rights which are uh, the rights and duties in case of utilizing a particular resource. As I said in this case the example of pond, that is my common property and me and my other neighbors of my village can use that for appropriate purposes. So, property rules which are, which are the rules under which those property rights are exercised. Okay? So, property rules 
are the rules under which those property rights are exercised very clearly means you just cannot claim your right on certain property or resources natural resources available within your village or within your community. So, there has to be uh, a clarity about the access to that particular resources all right. Now, I will discuss a uh, little bit more into different type of you know property and uh, how actually those work in the paradigm of common property right of NRM. Open access one like the example of pond that I have given no one has a legal right to exclude anyone else from using a resource in an area. So, that we call open access the example that I have given that common pond. So, no one can stop me or my fellow neighbor to utilize that common pond and its water open access. But remember if that pond is some for some reason is located within a protected forest then we cannot just have access just like that. This is what is the difference slight difference between open access and access with permission. Now, common property common property denotes a situation where members of a clearly defined group have the legal ability to exclude others to be able to use that particular resource. Okay. So, even though it is a common property, but it is common to a community a specific community mostly this kind of cases will will actually occur in area which are dominated by you know uh, local inhabitants tribal community. So, they have right to certain natural resources and they can actually stop using that particular resources by showing certain legal document or legal cases. So, even though common but not common for all private property it is a very straightforward case means you have created you have purchased you own it. So, it assigns the property to a identifiable individuals say this wristwatch that I am wearing this is purchased by me it is my wristwatch. So, I have the full right on on this wristwatch yes what I do with that that is my choice I can transfer this right to my son or my you know friend I can give as a gift to them. So, I transfer the right of uh, associated with my wristwatch to my son or to my friend that is possible because I own this I can transfer also the right to others or certainly I can deny someone to use my wristwatch this is my wristwatch. So, private property it assigns property to a identifiable individuals like in this case me which guarantees them to control of access and the rights to socially acceptable uses socially acceptable uses why this word is said suppose this wristwatch if I give it to someone he or she can use it there is no issue probably I can at the max can uh, give a uh, letter also stating that this so called so model watch has been given as a gift to these individuals. So, I transfer the right, but if I do not do that and somebody uses my wristwatch without my permission that is not socially acceptable and we know that then then what we call in that case if somebody takes my watch without taking my permission right state property which is owned by citizens of a political entity the state who in turn invest kind of rule making you know authority or a public agency department and they will take care of that state property and citizens will have the right to use that particular resource, but remaining within the rules that is established by that regulating agency all right. So, suppose a forest within my village and that forest is a protected forest 
it is under state government. So, the state ministry of forest and environment probably or somebody some other state uh, department will take care of that resource. And if I want to access that forest or forest product, then definitely I need to seek permission from that particular department or agency to whom the state has given the right to decide whom to give access and whom to not. So, this is how the you know the right associated with a natural resource or so for that matter any resource takes place. Now, common property right categories, there are different types of categories under common property right. Now, how they are actually decided, how they are actually formulated these different CPR categories. Now, one is on the basis of resource characteristics, the resource that we are talking about, size, size of the resource, boundary, low level of mobility, possibility of storage, of benefits from the resource, predictability, so and so forth, means all the characters associated with that particular resource that will decide also the category of CPR. Next, group characteristics, size, clearly defined boundaries, shared norms, past successful experience, appropriate leadership, interdependence between community or people, heterogeneity of endowments of certain community, homogeneity of identities and their interests, low level of poverty. So, these are certain characteristics of a group that also will decide the category of CPR. External environment like low cost or adaptable technology which are being used by the people for their suppose utilization of various natural resources for generating livelihood. So, what kind of low cost technology, adaptable technology that is coming from you know outside the village, low levels of articulation with you know external markets means your products which ultimately from your village need to go to the market, right? Then only we can fetch some profit and then our livelihood is ensured. Supportive mechanisms, non-interfering state or state departments, nested enterprises, these are certain external environment means outside your village which can actually also influence and decides the different CPR categories. Institutional arrangement, various rules it could be either you know established by state department or village level also institution, rules for you know to access to particular resources, rules which can easily be enforced in a particular area, then availability of low cost adjudications, accountability of monitors to users, this is also important. So, who are actually are accountable for the utilization of the resources. Suppose in my village as I said that I have a forest that is protected, state government is in charge. Suppose in my village if I have a natural resource like petroleum under the ground. Now, there has to be some kind of regulation, accountability, monitoring of those resources, how they are being extracted from the ecosystem of my village and being utilized for the betterment of, of society. Now, that things is kind of a institutional arrangements and that also will decide what type of common property right that me and my neighbors in the village would be entitled to. Okay? Now, friends common property regime is actually a, a very sensitive you know aspect. The right to any resources, natural resources is a very sensible aspect and how to deal with that is important to manage that particular resources for the benefit of the larger society. Common property regime is often used to refer a property rights arrangement and in which a group of resource users, you know in case that pawn me and my neighbors, we will share the rights 
and also duties towards the resource and its management. Who will take care? Otherwise, what will happen that we will end up with tragedy, tragedy of common. Okay? We will discuss about this later. So, unless that particular pond which is having access to you know all, but there has to be someone, some group who will share the rights as well as the duties to manage that particular pond or otherwise that pond one day will be destroyed and that will be a tragedy for common. Now, property rights it emerges in response to conflict over resources and a well defined property rights often helps to promote more efficient use of the resources and more responsible long care and utilization of this resource base. I would give one step further and would say that a appropriate property right regime, it can actually decides the peaceful state of a particular area, the development overall development and most importantly the happiness of the community. So friends, handling property rights in a proper manner is critical for natural resource management. The property rights can be clearly specified and exclusive to members of the user group. Suppose the pond that I have talked about, we can form a water user group for that particular pond that just me and my neighbors we are accessing. So, we can develop a water user group who will have the rights and also the duties towards the pond and that will ensure the sustainability of that natural resource and long time you know uses of a particular resource for the betterment of that particular society. So, property rights can be clearly specified and exclusive to the members of the user group and they secure if they receive appropriate legal support from the government. So, this thing has to be also supported by the government. So, if you form a water user group, certainly your local panchayat means you know the bottom level administrative unit political you know institutions, they will have also a kind of a responsibility to give certain kind of power to this water user group to maintain and manage a particular water resource. In this case, as I said that a pond, all right. So, I think that you know the right to common property and this proper management is very, very critical uh, for common property right as well as its role in natural resource management. Now, CPR what are the advantages it has? The resource as already from the discussions we have understood that it has lot of advantages because if you have a resource in your village, you can actually have access, many people can have access, you can have a long term benefits out of that particular resource provided that you maintain that resource in an appropriate manner. So, in case of many resource systems, you will find that say for watershed you know catchment area for instance, it uses in one zone immediately affect you know the productivity of the other. So, suppose in, in one watershed you create recharge well, definitely that watershed will get benefited, but the nearby one also will get positively affected. Now, the case is that if you start thinking that no I will not do recharge well and all those things water better watershed management in my watershed because the benefit is also getting to the uh, adjacent watershed. So, I will not do because they are they if they do then we will do then there is a issue and let me tell you frankly that that kind of issues often come when it comes to natural resource management and that has to be handled in a very smart manner. So, we will also see that if resources are readily divisible into suppose some units, the administrative support from the 
local institution to enforce the property rights to individual units uh, may not be available in every case. So, in that case common property right can be treated as a way of institutionalizing the collective management rules. How? By creating a imaginary social kind of fencing and informal codes internal to the user group in a sense that you will have a kind of a committee who will take decisions if somebody who are not within uh, that particular group and has, has no right to use that particular pond if he comes and uses it without approval or permission of the group what should be done with him. So, this kind of uh, aspects can also be integrated into common property right regime and especially it could be very uh, easy actually to manage certain natural resources which are very very critical to our daily life especially people who are living in uh, villages in rural area. Then people who are living in hilly ecosystem or any kind of fragile environment they are the, the issue of common property right is more sensitive because nature can create some kind of uncertainty on the productivity of any particular crop. So, in those areas fragile environment the location of the unproductive section cannot easily be predicted from year to year season to season. So, what do we do? In this situation the resource system is stationary and may even have obvious boundaries but the productive portions are volatile and in such resource systems the resource users may well prefer to share the entire area and decide together where to concentrate uses at a particular time and thus you actually share the risk associated in that particular area with that particular resources and also along with sharing the risk you also share the benefits. So, in a sense that in fragile environment it is beneficial that if you work as a group because you can you know divide the risk or you can distribute the risk because when, when the entire risk suppose there is a risk involved of 50,000 rupees if the particular crop is lost that if that risk is divided among 100 people 5000 per person or per family which is manageable perhaps and also but remember when you share the risk if from 50000 investment 1 lakh rupees comes out means 50000 benefit then also you will share that benefit 500 rupees each among 100 stakeholder or 100 household clear. So, in order to optimize the productivity of a unit of a of a land owners of individual unit may want to guarantee that owners of the adjacent unit also make compatible and complementary uses of their unit. Because in Indian case you have suppose a land here immediately adjacent there is a land and that may belong to another user group. Here user group 1 and here user group 2. Now, any good thing that you do here certainly that impact will be good for this unit also. So, in order to optimize the productivity of your unit you may also need that this unit also take certain good steps. So, owners of individual but owners of individual but continuous units as you see here may have an interest in the mutual regulation of the land use this is the critical point. So, this particular field unit suppose growing rice crop and here if this unit they grow some crop which is actually can be contradicted to rice cropping then it will not help either you go this field also with rice crop or some other crop which can actually you know complement the rice crop system in your adjacent unit. So, this is the way when you have this kind of situation working together will help 
and it can be beneficial for both party. So, now look at the disadvantages of CPR in NRM, just few I would like to mention here. You will find that there is always there will be a tendency of over exploitation of any natural resources that come under common property. That will be kind of a very you know common human nature. These issues are often faced by every community regardless of caste, creed, religion, geographical location. Suppose an example as you see here catching fishes that can lead to insufficient fishes for offspring production. Means in your suppose pond there are fishes. Now if you catch all the fish then in future there will be no fish to reproduce further number of fishes. So basically that pond system or fishery become unsustainable which is similar like the case of overgrazing of cattle in a limited land resources. You have little bit of grasses and pasture where you can take only 3 to 4 suppose animal, but you have 10, one day you see nobody is around, you have given all 10 there. So, in one day the entire grass grasses are over. So, over exploitation, over exploitation of grasses. So, in one day everything finished, next day nobody can use. That is an unsustainable way or over exploitation of a resource which is meant to be for everyone, but one individual went and completely utilized it because that is common, everyone has access. So, that is one disadvantage of common property, right? Sometime it happens. That is why in a previous uh, discussion I mentioned that certain resources can be common property, but still it should be under uh, some observations of a group. So, forming group on the basis of utilization of resources or livelihood can be very critical for proper management of common property. CPR often seen you know as a casual factor for resource destruction because it would be in users own private interest to harvest or exploit the resources as soon as possible. As many as he, he or she can take, use it, sell it or utilize it for own before anybody else can come and take that. That is a common you know human instinct. But when everybody owns the resource, nobody has taken care or considered the conservation of that particular resource for future, then we get into an in unsustainable situation which leads to as I mentioned in the previous slide tragedy of common. As long as that common property gives us you know benefit, we take it, but when it loses its productivity, then nobody wants to take care of, of that particular resource to rejuvenate it. That is another disadvantage. So, as I said that tragedy of common is a very important study you know carried out by Nobel laureate Alino Storm. So, each user imposes an external cost to all other users in terms of reduced resource availability because each one of us going there utilizing as much as possible before anybody else comes to use that resources. Because I want to maximize my own uses. So, each user in this case imposes an external cost because of this I mean you can say greed to utilize everything for my purpose. So, you put actually external cost to all other users who could have used that particular resource if you would not have taken everything. So, what you have done by over exploiting that resources you have basically reduced the resource availability to your neighbors, to your community. This is another disadvantages of common property right or common property. Thank you.